The race for the perfect monofocal plus IOL is on, and there's a crowded field laying claim to the ideal design. Rayner's Ray1 EMV is one of the most popular lenses worldwide, and Drs. Carl Stonecipher and Rajan Desai explain what makes this lens so special at AAO 2023 in San Francisco, and brought the head-to-head -head research to back it up. The minute we got it in the United States, I started using it. It's a great quality lens. You know, my practice is kind of geared towards more the Rayner EMV, and that's probably the number one implant I'm putting in. It's a lot of my LASIK patients, especially if they play tennis, pickleball, any kind of racket activity, if they're really good at golf or they're really good at a sport, they really want that crisp quality of vision that they were used to, that they got from LASIK. And a lot of them, when you talk to them about the dysphotopsias, they may kind of shy away and say, I really don't want a trifocal lens. I really don't want anything that's gonna take away from what I had previously. 20 years ago, the elderly patient with a cataract is an 80 year old who knits or does crossword puzzles up close. That was a typical cataract patient. The new one is your 62 year old parents who use their iPhone and iPad on WhatsApping all these funny memes to you. So the whole world is different. There's a world of near that was not as important before. So I had a desire for what presbyopal correcting lens for a patient. And so then when Rayner came out, I had a great depth of focus. Initially, I'm like, let's just try it out. What if I made one eye plane at one eye minus 0.5, which we do anyway. So a lot of my myopes who are used to thinking they'll need glasses for near or my hyperopes who all wear glasses, I just checked them, their distance vision. And I pull out a near card and said, what do you see? And they can read. And then I was like, well, my friend had needed glass. I thought I, you told me I need glass to read. I don't need the glass anymore. This is amazing. It's a lot of word of mouth happening saying, what is he doing differently that no one else is doing? I found this little lens, this Rainer lens. And it's really been a game changer for me. Primarily what I showed with this lens, it was about 3,000 plus patients that I'd operated on. And I showed with this lens, the Abbey values are so high. So the quality of the optics of the lens are so good that you don't see in any other type of lenses. That's one of the benefits of a hydrophilic lens like the Rayner EMV. And what we're getting is more 2016s, more 2012s, and more 2010s postoperatively. So it's great for me to, and I've done vividies on glaucoma patients also selectively. People who are very, very mild. I cherry pick people who have vividity and pick the sicker ones to get the EMVs. Ironically, EMV guys did better than the vividity people. So I found out that like 97% of patients were happy with their distance vision. And that 3% weren't. They said they were not satisfied completely. And a lot of those patients had visual field defect. They have glaucoma. They're not gonna be hundred percent perfect. So they're blaming things like floaters that have nothing to do with what type of lens it was, or they're even glaucoma. Surprisingly, only 8% of people needed glasses for reading. Uh, studies have done with vividity are about 25 to 62% of vividity patients had to use glass for reading versus 8% patients here did. Interestingly enough, patients could actually read 2040 with their dominant eye. The moment you had it with both eyes open, now they're getting 20, 25, 2030. They've been very, very happy. Again, no glare, just like vividity, no glare, no halos, no weird rings, positive dysphotopsies at nighttime. So satisfaction was great, but their independence of glasses was amazing up close. You are the doctor, so the patient relies on you. So when you give them this plethora of choices, and may, maybe we do that on cost, but they wanna know what you want them to have. So I'm gonna pick the lens for that person. So I've already narrowed down in my head, I don't use a lot of trifocals anymore. You have to have a pristine, perfect you know, eye for me to put that in. I'm using Vividi. Uh, in certain platforms, maybe that gives me a little bit more near than the Rainer EMV, but somebody may not want to pay extra for that. But the Rainer EMV is our go-to lens, and once I get the Toric, um, it, it'll probably be one of three lenses we offer. A trifocal, an extended depth of focus lens, and finally, what you can call a monofocal plus, but what, what I like to call is an extended range of vision lens. My office staff, it's their favorite thing to do. They just open it up and we just basically put it in. I mean, you put a little bit in a hole of the visco elastic, but there's really not a lot to it. It goes easily through a 2.4 incision, which I use, but the way it unfolds and also its stability in the caps or bag. Now, unfortunately, I haven't had the opportunity to use the Toric EMV because that's just about to come out, but I think that that's going to give us that stability that we really need in terms of rotation postoperatively. One reason why I picked uh, the Rayner lens, the haptics have an interesting shape to it. So haptics are designed so that they can take all the contracture away so they don't need center. 
it's also very, very forgiving that even if you're off by a millimeter, you still get a positive spoke aberration. Even if you're off by two millimeters away, now you're neutral. We know from the BVI lens and Vista lens, even if you have no spherical aberration at all, you get about 20 inches depth of field, which is still pretty darn close to near anyway. So the re later lens is very, very forgiving that you, you can be, it won't decenter that much. Even if it did, it still gives you a great 20 point uh, inch vision. But, but the Vividi lens, if you're one millimeter off, you lost half your power. Because the whole, the ring is 2.2 millimeters in between. There's no room for air on the haptics and the capsule bag. For a lot of my patients, a 40 year old with glaucoma, and they need cataract surgery for whatever reason. I think it's a great long-term lens to give them. I can trust it. I'm aware of their long-term optic nerve over the years. I'm giving them monofocal-like visual quality. So I'm excited to use more and more over the years. With its pure non-diffractive design, as well as one with induced positive spherical aberration, the Ray-1 EMV isn't your run-of-the-mill monofocal plus. The clinical results speak for themselves, and surgeons like Dr. Stonecipher and Desai are using it to take their cataract practices to new heights.